Hello everyone and welcome to another part of the Galga SDL tutorial videos and in this video we're going to finally start uh, setting up our system for collision detection. So what we'll start with is create our colliders and in the following videos we're going to implement our collision detection algorithm. So let's start by creating two new filters. So in our header files we'll add a new filter called physics and we'll do the same for the source files as well. So physics, there we go. And in the header files, we'll add our collider.h. So this one will be called collider. And this file, in this file, we will start with our if not defined. So if not defined, underscore collider, underscore h define underscore collider underscore h. We don't need a pragma once, but what we'll need is to include our texture.h. And the reason why we're including the texture.h is because we will need to debug our colliders to see what they look like. And it will be pretty helpful to have a texture there to show onto the screen uh, to show us the dimensions of our colliders. So include texture.h and we will also be using namespace click sdl. Now that we have this set up we can go ahead and create our class. So class collider this will inherit from our game entity and for the public section we will start off by having an enum class. So enum class Collider type, and this enum will have all the types of colliders that we're going to have in our game. For now, we're going to start off with two basic colliders, a box and a circle, and then uh, if you want to add more collider types, we can you can add it here in the collider type enum. So we'll have box and circle, but for the purposes of, of this tutorial, this is pretty much all we'll need. Next up, we will have our protected protected section. And in here, we will have a collider type member variable called mType and a static const bool. And this one will be called debug. So debug underscore colliders. And this one will start out being true. So if debug colliders is true, we're going to render our debug texture. If it's false, we won't render it. And for that, we will need to create the debug texture itself. So texture pointer m debug texture. And that will be it for our all our protected members. So let's move on to our public functions. So we'll have our constructor, so collider. And that needs to take a collider type as a parameter called type and our virtual destructor. So virtual collider. And finally, the final last public function will be a virtual void render. And that will be it for our public functions. We will need one more protected function. So protected void set debug texture. And this one will take a texture pointer called texture. And that is it for our collider.h. Now we can move on to our collider.cpp. So we'll go to our physics filter here and add a new item, collider.cpp. Here we can do an include collider.h. and then start out by implementing our constructor. So collider, collider, collider type, type. Actually, we'll need this one down here. And then start off by saying M type is gonna take on the value of type. So that will be it for our 
constructor actually we need to initialize our debug texture so the debug texture so m debug texture is going to be equal to a null pointer and that will be it for our constructor now to move on to our destructor so we'll say collider collider and for this one we will say that if the debug texture is not null so fm debug texture we will delete it and we will also set it to null. So m debug texture equals a null pointer. And that will be it for our destructor. Now for our set debug texture, void collider set debug texture. In here we will have a texture pointer called texture. And what we'll do is we will delete our m debug texture just in case that we set it before we don't want any memory leaks because if we had it set before we don't have any access to it anymore if we switch the texture so we will delete whatever we had before and there's no problem in deleting an null pointer and then what we'll do is say mdebug texture is going to be equal to the new texture that we passed in and then our debug texture parent is going to be equal to this and this will be pretty handy later on because since we set our debug texture to be a child of the collider if we move the collider around the, de the debug texture moves around with it as well so we don't need to actually update its position every frame it automatically does that with our uh, parenting system now the final function is our render so void collider render and in here we will check if the debug colliders uh, boolean is true so if debug colliders we want to say em debug texture render and that will be it for our collider.cpp now that we have this set up we can create our physics entity so we will go to back to our physics filter and add a new item and we'll call this one so this is a dot h and call this one phys entity from here we can say if not defined underscore phys entity underscore h define underscore phys entity underscore h now for our uh, includes we will need to include the collider class that we just created as well as vector so sdd vector so we'll start with the vector include vector and then we will also include collider.h since collider.h already is using the quick sdl namespace we don't need to do it again so we can move on to creating our class so class this entity will inherit from game entity and then we will have our protected section for our variables and this one will be an SCD vector of collider pointers and this one is called M colliders and the reason why we have a vector of colliders is because sometimes we can't really have a single shape to describe our entire object so we can use multiple colliders um, to kind of approximate the shape of our object to have a more accurate collision now to move on to our public functions so public phys entity constructor and then virtual phys entity destructor then a virtual void render and that will be it for our public functions now to move on to the protected ones so protected and we'll have void add collider and this one will take in a collider pointer called collider as well as a vector 2 which will be the local position of that collider that we're passing in so local position 
and that will have a default value of vec2 underscore zero. Now all we need to do is to create our physentity.cpp. So in our physics filter, we will add a new item and that one will be physentity.cpp. And in here, we will include our physentity.h. Then what we'll do next is to implement our constructor. So the constructor for the physentity is just gonna be empty. So we can say his entity, his entity. So we can leave this one empty. And then his entity destructor. Now for our destructor, we need to clear all the colliders that we created. So we will look through that vector. So for int i equals zero, i is less than colliders dot size, i plus plus and then delete m colliders at i and m colliders at i is going to be equal to a null pointer and finally we just need to clear the vector so m colliders dot clear and that will be it for our destructor now to move on to whoops now to move on to our uh, add collider function we will say void is entity add collider so this one will have our collider and local position then what we can say is that the collider that we just passed in what we want to do is set its parent to this and then we need to set its local position to the local position that we're passing in so collider position is going to be equal to the local position. So our local position that we're passing in, and that will be it, I believe. Yes. Okay. So that will be it for our position. Let's double check because I can't really remember if it sets it to the world or local position by default. So we can go to our uh, position and all it's doing is setting the position to uh, m position equal to position. So that we should be fine with that. Okay, so to move on now, we need to add our collider to our collider's uh, list or vector. So the vector will be m colliders dot pushback collider. And that will be it for our function. Now, what we need to do is to render our colliders. So void this entity render. And in here, what we'll do is loop through it and render all the colliders. So for int i equals zero, i is less than m colliders dot size, i plus plus, m colliders at i render. And that will be it for our physentity.cpp. Now that we created both, all that's left is to create one of our colliders. So the first one we're going to start with is um, our box collider. So let's go ahead and create that. In physics, we can add a new item. And this one will be called box collider. So box collider. And for this one, in the .h file, we will have, if not defined, box collider underscore h, define underscore box collider underscore h. And then, for our includes, we will include our collider.h and we will also include, um, actually, that's probably all we need to include for now. And we will have our class box collider that will inherit from our collider class that we just created. Now for our private variables,
we will have a static const int max underscore verts which will be equal to four because we need four vertices for our box to check our collision and then a game entity pointer called mverts and this one will be a size of max verts and the reason why we have it as game entities is because we can assign our verts to be a child of the box collider and that way when the box collider rotates all our verts actually rotate with it so it's going to be pretty handy once we start doing our collisions now for our public functions so public box collider that will take a vector 2 which will be the size of our box and our destructor so box collider destructor and that will be it for our public functions the last one is a protected or we can probably make it private at this point since we're not making the, the uh, destructor virtual anyway so private we'll call this one void add vert and that will be int index and a vector to position there we go now that we have all our functions and variables uh, declared we can create our cpp file so physics add new item and this one will be box collider dot cpp so in here what we'll do is start by including our box collider dot h and then for our constructor we will say box collider box collider and we need to call the collider constructor because we need to give it a type so collider collider type so our type will be box we don't need the bracket up here so we'll make it down here and then we will add the four verts that we need to add for our um, for our collider oh right the constructor took a vector 2 that's right so let's add the vector 2 here so vector 2 called size and we can now start by adding the four verts so add vert this one will be the zero with vert and this one will be a vector two of negative 0.5 f multiplied by size dot x and negative 0.5 f multiplied by the size dot y so that will be our first vertex now the rest of our verts we can probably copy and paste this three more times that one would be one two and three and then so we need verts on each side of our uh, origin point so now that we have the negative x and negative y so that's um, to the left and up because sdl's uh, system is down it increases in uh, on the y so we have our negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 we can also have our 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5 and then we will have negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so that's it for all our points and then if debug colliders so if we're debugging our colliders we need to load in our debug texture so we can say set debug texture to be a new texture and the name for that texture will be called box collider.png and that texture I actually already created so let's go to our solution explorer so that's our project here we can go to debug and assets and I actually have one created uh, somewhere here so if I can find that debug assets there we go so our box collider 
And as you can see, this one is called Box Collider, and it's um, it's a red texture that's 100 by 100, but the opacity is at 50%. So that way, I can put it on top of a, of another texture, and I can see the I can still see the texture, but I can also see the collider around. It. So now that we set our Box Collider.png we need to scale our texture to be the same scale as our box. So what we'll say is m debug texture is going to be, its scale is going to be equal to our size divided by 100.0. So because our size, my texture size that I created is 100 by 100, I'm taking the, scale, the size that I passed in and dividing it by 100 to get the right scale for that texture. As you can see here, it's saying it's having issues with the divide by. And the reason for that is because we didn't override the divide operator to accept um, division for our vector twos. So what we'll do is go to our math helper dot h, there it is, and we'll scroll down where we're overriding our multiply operator. And we already have this for the multiplication, so all we need to do is copy and paste these two. So now that we have these two, and replace all the multiplication by divisions. So there we go. We have these three, so now we can divide on the right side, but we will also want to divide on the left side in case that comes up later on. So divide, divide, and divide. There we go. So now we have uh, division operations working for our vector two as well. If we go back to our box collider, now it doesn't complain anymore about the division. Okay, so now moving on to our destructor, we can say box collider, box collider. And in here, what we'll need to do is to, um, is to delete the verts that we created. So these four verts, four int i equals zero, i is less than the max verts, and then I plus plus delete M verts at I and then M verts at I is going to be equal to a null pointer. And that will be it for our destructor. Now the final function that we have is our add vert. So void box collider add vert. This one will take in an int index. So, no, there it is. So int index on a vector two position. And for that, we will say our inverts at index is gonna be equal to a new game entity at our position that we're passing in. And our inverts at the index its parent is going to be equal to this. And that will be it for our uh, box collider.cpp. Now that we have everything set up here, we can start testing our box collider that we just created. So let's go first to our, let's say our bullet class. So if we go to bullet.h, so Galaga bullet.h, and in here, what we want to do is to add the collider to our bullet. So to add this to our bullet, we need to make our bullet into a physics entity, the one that we just created. So instead of, add, of including texture.h, we will include physentity.h. And then instead of inheriting from game entity, we will inherit from physentity instead. Everything else can stay the same because none of this functionality we want to change. And then we can move on to our bullet.cpp. So in bullet.cpp, what we'll do is go in here. So Galaga bullet.cpp. In the .cpp, we want to include the box collider.h. And then all the way at the end here, we will add a collider, and this collider will be a new box, new box collider. And this box collider needs a size. Now, there's an issue that we have now. 
if we go to our texture.cpp or texture.h I mean for our texture.h we actually don't have a way to get our width and height for the texture all we have is the size that we inherited from our game entity so we need a way to get our size but we add all we also don't want the size of the texture that we loaded we want the size of the texture on the screen so we want the scale dimension of that texture for that in inside the public area for texture.h we will add a new function to help us with that so in here we can go to right underneath our destructor and add a vector to function called scale scaled dimensions and we just need to implement this function in our texture.cpp so let's go to that and we'll go all the way down here right above our render and we can say void texture scaled dimensions and in here we will get our scale dimensions we are we're already doing this right here so we're taking the width and multiplying it by the scale. So we'll do the same in this case. So we'll say vector2 scale dimensions small s in here. So vector2 scale dimensions, so just a variable, is going to be equal to our world scale. And then what we'll do is get our scale dimensions.x. So scale dimensions dot x is going to be multiple times equals our m width, and then our scale dimensions dot y is going to times equals our m height, and then we'll return our scaled dimensions. And this one will this will be it for our. Um, hmm, what is it complaining about now? That is interesting. Declarations incompatible with this. So let's go back to our texture.h. We have vector2 scale dimensions, and that's it. Should be fine. Vector2. Oh, for some reason I made it a void. Don't know why. There we go. So vector2 scale, texture scale dimension. Okay. It's been a while since I made a video, so it seems like I'm still a bit rusty. So let's see here. Now that we have our scale dimension, we can go back to our bullet.cpp. And in here, we can say we want to take our texture and get its scaled dimensions. And that will be it for our, um, our bullet. Now that we have it here, we want to be able to render our collider. So we can go down here, right underneath if, uh, mtexture render, we can say fizz entity render. Okay, it seems like we have everything set up for us now. We can maybe try to run the game and see how it goes. There we go. A few warnings. Hopefully no errors. There we go. Zero errors so far. We'll probably go through and fix all these warnings at some point. Uh, usually just conversions from double and floats and so on. So we'll go through that uh, once we're done and fix that up. There we go. Hopefully the sound is not too loud. So let's see. Um, yep, it's pretty low, so that's fine. So now when we fire our bullet, we should be able to see a red box around the bullet. So let's see if we can see that. There we go. And as you can see here, there's a red box around the bullet and that will be our collider. So let's see if we can do the same for the enemies and the player as well. So first, let's go to our enemies. And for that, we will go to our enemy.h. So enemy.h. And in here, we will include our fizz, fizz entity. So instead of inheriting from game entity, we will inherit from fizz entity just like we like we did with the bullet 
but now we need to give the collider for each enemy separately because our um, our collider needs to be a different size for each enemy. So let's first go to our butterfly.cpp. So actually, we also need to change something in enemy.cpp. For that, we will go all the way down to our handle states or render states, I believe. We have our render states, so enemy render states, all the way down here, we can say fez entity render. That way we can render our physics entity regardless of what state we are in, instead of putting the phys entity render in each one of these. So in render states, we can put phys entity render all the way at the bottom. Now that we have this set up, we can go to our, each one of our enemies and add its collision point. So let's start off with our butterfly. So for the butterfly, we will go to our butterfly.cpp and go down here to our constructor and underneath our type here, we can say add collider, new box collider. And this one will take M textures at one scale dimensions. Now we're using texture at one um, because the texture at one is a bit smaller than the texture at zero. Their wings are not uh, fully expanded. We could make it um, texture at zero instead to give the player an easier time hitting the enemies, but it, it doesn't really matter which one we choose. Uh, I went with this one just because whenever the wings are closed, it will be a bit more accurate than having the, the the wings closed and the bullet passing by the enemy and still killing it. So that's what we're gonna do for this one. Um, that is odd that it's complaining right all the way at the top. We need to include our box collider. So in the .cpp at the top, we will include box collider.h. And that will be it for our butterfly. So let's run our game and see what it looks like. see here hopefully there we go as you can see our butterflies now have their collision boxes around them so that seems to be working pretty well now we need to just do the wasps and the bosses as well so let's close that up and go to our wasp.cpp so let's copy this because there's no reason to just write it out every time so let's go to our wasp.cpp and in the constructor just like the butterfly we will paste this one and then all the way at the top we will include box collider.h and that will be it for the wasp now let's go to the boss and then include box collider.h and then go down to the boss constructor and add our collider in here as well and that should add our colliders to all our enemies so now we have it on the bullets and all three enemies. What's left is to add it onto the player. There we go. So let's see if it shows up for all the enemies now. And yep, yeah, it looks like it's showing up. And there we go, the bosses have it as well. The main reason why we don't want the, the collision to be pixel perfect on the enemies is because um, as long as it feels right for the player to hit the enemies, it doesn't really matter. You could add more and more colliders to make it a bit more accurate, but that's what we're going to do with the player. If you want to do the same for the enemies, you can do that as well. That should be fine. Okay, so now let's move on to the player. So the player, we need a bit more accurate collision for the player. We don't want the player to be hit by something and they don't think that they should have been hit. And that's why the player collision should be a bit more accurate. So let's open up our player.h. So there it is. And in here, let's include, oh, this one already includes bullet.h. So we should be okay. We should have access to our phys entity already. So 
we will inherit from phys entity instead of our game entity for the player and then go to our player.cpp and all the way at the top we will include box collider.h there we go and we can go to our constructor there it is and start adding our colliders so for the player it's a bit different than the enemies what we're gonna do let's let's start off first by making it the same size as the player ship so we can say add collider or actually we have it copied already so add collider and instead of m textures we can say m ship scale dimensions and let's see what that looks like Okay, we did not add the render, the phys entity render. So we can go all the way down here inside the player render, and down here we can say phys entity render. And that should show us our colliders. So there we go. Let's give that another try, and hopefully that works this time. There we go. As you can see, this is the player's collision box. Of course, we don't really care if it's showing up right now because it's just a debug and then we're gonna remove that in the finished game anyway so as you can see if the player gets hit right here or right there it's gonna be an issue because you don't really want the player to be hit here and then they would die uh, they should be able to dodge in these areas so let's make it a bit more accurate by making the box a bit smaller so let's start off by going to our constructor and instead of just passing in the dimensions of our ship, we will pass in a few hard-coded values instead. So 15.0f, and for the height, the, the height for my player is 67 pixels high. So I'm going to put in 67.0f for the player. Does that look right? Oh yeah, I need a vector 2. So vector 2. 15.0f and 67.0f. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. As you can see, it's a much smaller box now, and it's just covering the front area or the middle, middle section of the player. So if the player gets hit here, they wouldn't really have any complaints because it's really close. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between like being hit right here and there. So that's fine, but we want the collision to also cover this section as well. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to add a couple more colliders for these sections. So we will add two more colliders. We'll keep them 15 wide as well. But what we're going to do is move them to the sides. So to move them to the sides, we will just add because our as you can see, our box colliders, it takes a size, but our add collider, it takes in the collider and the local position of that collider. So over here, we can say vector2. We want this one at 15.0f, so a bit to the right, and 10.0f, so 10 pixels down. Now for the other one, we will do the same, but instead of 15.0f, it will be negative 15.0f. And that will be our other two colliders. We probably don't want them as high, but let's run it for now and see what it looks like. There we go. As you can see, now it's taken shape to be around what the player looks like. But we want, don't want this section at the top or at the bottom, so we can now make it a bit shorter. So if we close that up and go, go right here where our Y size is and change that to something like 40 pixels high. So 15 by 40 and let's see what that looks like. There we 
go. And yeah, there we go. So that's what the uh, player's collision box looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, if you want to add more and more box colliders to actually make it pixel perfect, you can probably do that. Uh, but this is pretty much good enough for me. And that will pretty much be it for this section of the tutorial. Now we have created our colliders. What's next is that we need to implement our collision algorithm using these colliders. Uh, you'll notice that we haven't used our circle colliders yet. And the reason for that is because we're gonna use our circle colliders to be used as a broad phase collision to eliminate all the, all the other colliders because it's a lot easier to do uh, circle collision or it's a lot faster to do circle collision than box collision, especially when the boxes are rotating. So we'll use the circle colliders as broad phase collision and then we'll use the box colliders as narrow phase collisions. And that will be for the next video. But I really hope that this video helped. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.